Right, hello guys, and glad to have you on board again. Today, I thought this one was worth mentioning, so I've released a video about this thing, uh, because we're gonna have to talk about the hype cycle that is coming from Gartner. So you will find documentation about that all around the web very easily. Anyway, what worth mentioning today is the fact that I've found some interesting similarities with the models that I was following previously. So kind of resonating stuff that's kind of forced me to include a portion of this hype cycle in my personal models. So I wanted to share that information today because you already probably know most of the models that I follow, though lots of things will sound a lot like what you've heard before, but we're adding some spices to the dish. It's more likely that I think this one is much more explanatory of uh, uh, market price reactions that we could see in the next cycle. So this is nothing too fancy, nothing entirely new from what you've heard before if you were listening to this channel already. But uh, I think this one explains in greater details and in a much more easier fashion the things that I had in mind all along. So let's get it started. So the things that you already know, so I'm going to quickly pass on these, the adoption cycle and uh, what it creates. So this is here you have the adoption curve replicated in green. So as you can see, this one looks like kind of an ace shape in which, of course, we've got multiple early uh, uh, cycles of adoption, the innovative cycle, which is just really, really very, very early adopters who were just there for the tech very early. They were lucky to come across the technology and been diving in, uh, jumped in with both feet very, very early. Then comes the early adopters. We uh, have a, a, a chart about this one. Uh, so quickly reminding you about this one, the, the, the innovators, the early adopters uh, are those who enjoy new innovation and are comfortable taking social risks, uh, but are largely motivated by its potential to drive their success. They're very influential on the marketplace and acting as trendsetters. So in here, the largely first motivation for this is risk taking and they're kind of the same old pump and dumpers. Uh, they want to make quick bucks and stuff like that. So they like innovation and so on but they're really, really willing to take risk, okay? So that's the number one factor for these. Then comes the early majority. The early majority has a totally different type of behavior. They're more pragmatic investors type of things. They do follow new innovation only when it is proven and they feel comfortable that it won't put them at risk. So they are less, less risk takers. They're not necessarily risk averse like the late majority will be. These guys are really risk averse. They will reduce risk to the bare minimum and then we wait for these things to be proven entirely safe before actually trying to use them moderately. So these will be the late comers, which we don't want to be part of, of course, but understand that the early majority which is coming along the way has a totally different way of behaving than the early adopters, which probably most of you listening to me today were, or even innovators for some of you. So understand these things. Those who are coming next have a totally different psychology than the ones you probably have or have experienced already. That's one thing we've already mentioned, so I'm going to quickly pass on this one. Okay, the next curve that we have in here is the performance S curve, very well known on any transformative technology stuff, in which, of course, we've got this kind of early stage of maturity and then the quick, quick breakthrough type of acceleration and then uh, the tail end, which is keep on increasing until we, of course, mature the market and find kind of a plateau. But over time, this really matters to understand that we are breaking through. There are really breakthrough technology in which limited amount of time perform significant amounts of transformative technology improvements. So this is what's heading next. Uh, we're just at the beginning and we have to understand that when we pull out all of those curves and models on top of each other, you would see something that I hardly could explain otherwise. And of course, the hype cycle of Gartner, which is very, very similar uh, uh, then to the cycle that I was previously using, though let me just bring up that slide. Okay, so this one hasn't never been translated in English, but to put it plain simple, this is the revolution model that I've always followed in which you have the newcomers that are coming to disrupt the old world and you have the old world perception at the same time, which will they fi uh, find uh, the newcomers being stupid and dangerous. And of course, they totally lose control because the technology is a breakthrough uh, revolutionary stuff. And then of course, fight, uh, fight or denial. And they have absolutely radical behavior type of 
uh, uh, uncontrollable stuff. On the opposite hand, the newcomers uh, have been coming along the way and they have a sense of control. They think they got it under control. They really, really uh, shook uh, everyone in this game. They took total control of these things. We're going to revolutionize the world and so on. Then, of course, came the resolution phase in which the old world resignate and capitulate. They understand that they've missed the shot, so they're going to have to adapt. And on the opposite direction, the momentum that was driving the hype turns out to nervosity and doubt, which ends up creating a very violent delusion phase in which these guys now have a fight, flight or denial type of reaction, very emotive. They are fighting to death or leaving the market. Uh, in the most extreme behaviors. When, of course, the late uh, uh, adaptions phase of the old world will be uh, feeling like everything is going back to business, which it won't, because we're going to end up with a hybrid world. Uh, and it will have irrational behavior uh, in terms like revenge uh, uh, and things like that. So these are the models that we've talked about. And of course, the end, the end game is that anyway, we terminate by saying it was obvious, meaning that both can try to at some point come up for the other and understand that something uh, very radical in terms of uh, psychological shift has happened. And anyway, everyone has lost control at some part of the process, though it's just a psychological shakeout more than anything else. So there are very intrinsic similarities with that model that I have followed along, uh, and of course, uh, these uh, uh, model from Gartner. So back to it, if we pull it out of a chart, we can see that the Gartner cycle comes at the uh, same old thing. The hype is built at the early adopters uh, phase, on the, once the early adopters phase is starting to get in. Though this is really on the early stages of development for a project in which, of course, uh, uh, you will follow that peak of hype, which in my personal opinion totally correlate with what we've seen in the early 2021, when basically there were absolutely no fear in the markets, everyone controlled everything, and we had thousands of absolutely worthless projects people making 200x on things that worth absolutely nothing but pennies. And it was very, very dangerous back then. So very stupid, like we've seen, and dangerous. And then, of course, came the resolution that we now know very much all about, which is delusion phase. I never thought this would be that deep in terms of price drops, but still, here we are. So the thing is that this uh, 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 delusion phase, the trope of delusionments, it is basically coming right to the cyclicity in which the early adopters laid stages in, uh, and of course, we're past the charm, okay? And in that perspective, though this is not entirely aligned, the, the peak of hype is coming normally along, along with the chasm. Uh, but the thing is that anyway, what matters is you understand that when we give ourselves into this truth, this trough of delusion, then in that perspective, this is normally in the shift moment in which we get into the early majority adoption cycle lifespan. So what it tells us is that what's next now after this trough of delusion is that normally the uh, uh, performance curve should nearly enter its very high growth phase, meaning that we should get breakthrough technologies being released uh, very, very quickly. We should get an absolutely tremendous cycle of innovation in the, uh, the space. And we have all of the routes necessary for this. Uh, most of the project, the good project now are fully funded. So we're not nearly experiencing a bear market like 2019 and so on. We're flooded with cash now. So all of the good projects are really, really like, for some of them, even overflown with money. So they have plenty of money to keep on working on innovative technology. And these work will produce some results. This is what the model tells us, that the performance S-curve is about to enter the parabolic phase in which the numbers of breakthrough technologies in terms of performance and network activity will be the greatest. The second thing is that we also know that the adoption curve's momentum is where we're going to start picking up because the early majority is going to go in. The numbers of newcomers to the network are going to be just as big uh, day by day until they reach the peak uh, uh, momentum, which is expected to come at a later stage. Normally, as we can see in here, following this model's alignment, the early majority should start filling the end of its momentum nearing the termination phase of the uh, uh, S-curve uh, acceleration phase. 
And then, of course, we'll enter in kind of a plateau of productivity in which, of course, we're still going to keep slowly but consistently increasing performance as, of course, the momentum of adoption goes into the later stages of late majority and laggards. So in that perspective, the newcomers to the network will slow down in terms of first derivative. There will still be new people going in, okay? But the thing is that the pace at which these guys go in starts to slow down. So this is where we reach out the network over capacity. This means at some point, the innovative breakthroughs and the increases in performance are overmatching the newcomers, meaning that we will get over capacity in the network, we will have probably too much block space for too little users to make use of. So in that perspective, this is where we reach out market maturity. And of course, as over time, uh, these things play them games. What matters to me is to let you understand that when I always mention the K-shape recovery, this really explains a lot because like we stated, if we pull all these pieces together, you would see that the early majority psychological mind state is not risk averse uh, and it's not nearly risk taking either. It's more like they will be willing to take some definite amount of risks, but they will pull their money into the safest projects. Those that they have proven market shares and proven technologies, those that feel the safest. So the thing is that the adoption curve will drive demand and this demand will only be targeted the safest project. Don't even think that the early majority will have the same old early adopters bullshit type of investment, searching and seeking for 200x. These guys don't have the same motives. They will not go on 20x leveraged positions on very volatile assets. Definitely not going to be that, their kind and their type of investment. So you have to understand that. The demand coming from the adoption curve is going to be targeted to a limited set of projects who have proven technologies, who are leader of their business models and have definite market shares. Okay, really important to understand. The second thing is that the performance curve will be derived from technological breakthrough in the best and the leaders of these markets. So call that that those who will succeed at making technological breakthroughs to increase network performance will drive tremendous, tremendous demand as well, because there will be demand for their block space because of the, of the breakthrough technologies that will bring in. So you have to understand that the next cycle's momentum is gonna be driven by totally different factors. It's gonna be driven by net performance, like organic growth and adoption curve motivated through lower risk taking and better quality project targeting. So this is what's gonna support. Of course, there will still be hype demand. Understand it that way, the peak of hype that we've seen in the 2021 breakthrough is not nearly gonna be as big as it was. So that's the first thing to take out of it. The hype will never be there again. And the projects that were solely based on hype probably already made their all time highs. It'll never, never get there again. They will still be the same old recovery that I mentioned post this delusion phase will go back to the mean, but the projects that are fully hyped based, they will not profit from the performance curve demand, nor the adoption curve. So these projects will be left with retracing to average prices and slowly but steadily getting out of interest, no demand. So the offer may be whatever it is, but the prices will go down due to the limited demand based solely on hype, because this is where we are now. Hype might recover earlier than the technological breakthrough and earlier than the uh, uh, adoption curve gets to its steeper pace. So what's next for us to come now is the recover of hope. Yes, because after the truth of delusion, man, hope should go back in this market. This is probably what's going to lead the early reaction in the market. But this hope will quickly be terminated and will be taken over by technological breakthrough and adoption curves. But the targeted demand for these two, it means that not everyone will be there. And what that's left is that those who don't have performance increase and adoption demand will follow suit with this. They will recover and then lose market shares. Those who will benefit and the limited ones who will benefit from technological and performance breakthrough and adoption curve might have eventually had a peak of hype in 2021. But if you sum up all of those curves, what they will do is that they will quickly overperform absolutely breakthrough when they will get that significant performance increase I'm not mentioning just Ethereum in case of 
you didn't understand that. <laughs> and then they will still have the slow pickup that will help this thing keep on trending over time, even when the performance increases in a relative basis will start to slow down. We still have a consistent increase afterwards. It's just the momentum will start to slow down at some point, but they will have followed through trends, both supported by adoption and the consistent performance increases. You have to understand this. This is very crucial. Of course, over time, these will not drive hype. Even over time, even good projects will pull out hype, meaning that the hyped demand for cryptocurrencies as breakthrough technologies will slow down over time. This will help stabilize price, in which in the end, we reach out the full plateau in terms of prices as well. And we've done what I've always said prices will do anyway, shifting from area A to an area B, period. The value area B of the good projects, which will have significant increase in performance and adoption, will inevitably shift their current price structure away to higher valuations. There is no other way around. But the rest of their market, the 99% who will die, they will not succeed gathering significant performance increases because they probably most of them have sold hype or unpredictable stuff. They've sold something on the paper that can nearly be done in the reality. So those who sold bullshit will be sorted out naturally over time and they will not be adopted because the next ones coming don't target things that don't have proven materials to work with. If you understand that, I think now you understand everything on how so many projects will fail hard out of these two and they will be left with hype. They will probably pump back again, but they will never ever have a chance to recover all time highs and the demand will go elsewhere. Limited demand with a lot of supply available in the entire market means anyway, these assets will go down to zero because the demand will go elsewhere on the ones that will succeed all time high again and go price discovery. Those who think that the whole crypto market is bullshit are definitely wrong. It's just that right now we're leading into maturity stages that leaves us to understand these things. The demand will be far less scattered than it was before. Forget about the 200x all across the board. Very few unlimited targeted assets will take on the lead and it will hold it for a long time. That being said, more than enough for today. See you guys later.